My name is Carlos Aliaga for the online radio show Lejos de la Multitud. And today I'm talking again with John Langford, a founding member of the Mekons, a band that started in Leeds, a band that, a band that started in Leeds in 1976 as a punk band who later brought some elements of country music to their recordings during the mid 80s, I think. He has, he yeah. has also recorded with the Three Johns, the Waco Brothers, the Pine Valley Cosmonauts, and has also done some solo recordings. John now lives in Chicago and released this year an album called, an album with the Bright Shiners called Where It Really Starts. Uh, you can listen a song from that album on the last episode of the online radio show Lejos de la Multitud, available on the, ways, or available on the website of this platform. Uh, we had a previous conversation with John uh, that you can find translated into Spanish on the website of this show. So this is our second session. John, thanks for being here again. <laughs> Sorry about the... Nice to be back. Nice to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the... For the people uh, thinking about what went wrong, it, it was technical difficulties. And so I would like to start asking about a painting that you did called Long National Nightmare, where uh, appear Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask, uh, how did you get insp inspired to do this work, and why did you include it in it? the Chilean president, Salvador Allende. Um, I was a student in England at art college in the late 70s, and that's when the punk rock thing went on. Uh, one of the major political issues at that time uh, was the US and UK government support for uh, Pinochet and Margaret Thatcher, I mean, later on, Margaret Thatcher loved him. She thought he was absolutely fantastic. And it was shocking to us because we were um, very aware of what happened and why it happened in Chile. And what year was that when Allende was killed? Was that 73? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. Um, last month, uh, it was 51 years from the coup d'etat. Right, also, yeah. And also it the was a big... Oh, a big, big issue, and a, 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 I remember, like nearly every week at the university, there would be uh, Chile, Chile solidarity meet, meetings yeah. and benefits and stuff. And there were, I think, there were uh, Chilean people who were kind of political refugees. You know, yeah. would come definitely. People would come and talk, and it for us, it was you know just. The Vietnam War had just ended. Nixon had gone, but it was kind of shocking to find out what was actually really going on. And the British government, had, Howard Wilson, had kept Britain out of the Vietnam War. But uh, it was clear by the end of the 80s that, uh, you know, the, the way American policy towards Central America, Latin America, South America was was progressing. It was... It was to support the worst bastards you could possibly imagine, militarily and financially. And yeah, I mean, it was a big it was a big issue for us at the time. And that painting, I just keep coming around to to to, to you know formative things that were going on for me politically. And we were, you know, Reagan Thatcher was one thing, but prior to that. I think Kissinger was, I mean, and when I made that painting, Kissinger was still alive. He hadn't actually died at that point. And uh, I don't know, I just thought the ghost of Allende kind of haunting him might be a nice Shakespearean type image. You know? That would be great. <laughs> would yeah. Be nice. But um, yeah, just the sheer injustice and brutality of that really devalues everything that America allegedly stands for so um and then we of course then we had you know the Falklands war and the British went back to retake the Malvinas Islands you know and that was this casual return to warfare from purely out of cynical political kind of necessity you know Margaret Thatcher needed something she needed a 
she was losing popularity because her domestic policies were so harmful and harsh that you know a good let's have a good war and then we we'll go off and the British Navy will sail off and you know fight some foreigners and then we will all be I'll be swept back to power and when the the idea that the bell there was going to be a negotiated peace to that war she basically murdered uh I forget how many conscripts were on the Belgrano, but they were sending a ship of troops to the Malvinas, and uh, the troop ship, the Belgrano, turned away and was returning to returning to Argentina. And yes. Margaret Thatcher was told that, and she said, "Sink it anyway." Yes, yes. Because she needed that war for her own political. It's like Netanyahu now in Gaza. Exactly, exactly. You know. Um... If people who are uh, look, um, seeing this video want to know more about the, the, how Chile became what it is today, I'm, go I'm going to recommend this book. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, you can find it very easily in English. It's, it's more easy to find it in English. And also, I wanted to mention that um, last weekend was the 92 birthday um, anniversary of um, Victor Jara. I don't know if you, if you know his story. Uh, what Victor happened? Jara was in the stadium. Yeah. Exactly. And I wanted to, 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 to <laughs> not move the conversation away, but uh, uh, connect it with The Clash, because they mentioned that on the song Washington Bullets, that yeah. you, you did a, a painting and collaborated in a tribute to that album. Um, Sandinista, I, yeah. Sandinista. And I saw a, pic a picture taken with, uh, of you with Just Trammer. And could you tell us how you became acquainted, uh, acquainted uh, I don't know if that's the word, how you meet him? Uh, yeah, not acquainted, that's, that's exactly the right word. Um, I saw The Clash very early on. Obviously, they were one of the, uh, you know, they were from London and they were signed a major deal very early on with CBS. They were very hyped. Um, I was suspicious of them. The first Recon single was actually a kind of reply record to The Clash's White Riot. Because by the time the song White Riot had got up the motorway to Leeds, it became a fascist anthem. That's not what they meant. I understood I understood what they were trying to say in their song. They were pledging solidarity with West Indian youth who were rioting at the time and saying we needed a, a white kids to riot. But it sounded in the north of England that they were saying something fascistic or that a white yes. power kind of message, which... It taught me a lesson very early on about songwriting, that you have to be very clear. There's no room for ambiguity, especially if you're trying to be political and you're trying to get on a soapbox and, you know, pronounce things. So I think the Mekons always kind of avoided that, the big capital P political stuff. What we tried to do with our first single, it was called I've Never Been in a Riot, and present a, present like a slice of life of what it was like to be a wimpy art student. <laughs> you know. I, but, relate, I relate with that song because sometimes yeah. I've been like, like in a riot here in Chile in 2019, there were big riots against the government. Well, it's a long story. And they were happening in front. In front of me is a church that was burnt. So every day I have to see it. And, wow. and it's like, they call it, um, ground zero because yeah. all these blocks have been attacked and burned not my building fortunately but that's another story um, uh, yeah well riot is a thing you don't necessarily want to be in because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's your home it's, yeah. it's wild, it's unpredictable and people get hurt and uh, you know it, we just thought that song was fairly irresponsible and it I mean, that was it was sorted out later. They made they made it very clear where they stood, and I liked Job Strummer very much. And there was all these rumors that he, you know, learned to play guitar and 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 in my hometown in Newport. And I didn't really work this out till much later, but it was true. He when he was uh, he was just kind of drifting around. He wasn't at college. Some people told me he'd been an art student at Newport Art School. Where there was a big art school in my hometown, but he was basically just hanging around there. Interestingly enough, Ian Jury was hanging around there as well. Also, wow. At the same time. So uh, 
he was more connected to the art world. Joe was just a got a job up in the Baselink Road Cemetery, which was right behind where I lived, and he was um, he tried to get a job as a grave digger, but he was too feeble to dig graves, so he actually just kind of tidied up around the place. But he was working up there, and he was. Um, hanging out with some of the Newport musicians and the Newport bands. And there was one great band called uh, Crazy Caban and the Rhythm Rockers. We were a kind of Irish traveler kind of rockabilly band. Very, very um, purist rockabilly band. They just wanted to sound like Sun Records, Elvis Presley and some of those other guys. And you can hear it in what Strummer did with the 101ers, that he was very influenced by that. And when I did get to meet him later on, he called our record company and asked one of three Johns put out a single called AWOL. He heard it on the radio and he asked our record company if we could go and support The Clash, which we did. And we met him and he was very friendly and supportive. Um, but years later, I actually opened for him in Chicago, one of his last gigs in Chicago at the Metro. And we got to talk about his experiences in Newport and what I always loved about The Clash, I think, was that once they did get it sorted out, once they got past their first single, and once they started thinking seriously about politics, there was, a, in a way, that sort of, they led punk rock into a very positive political direction where people could actually sing about other things other than drinking beer and having sex on a Friday night. It was, The Clash made kind of, British rock and roll could grow up a little bit, you know, yeah. or it it took it into reality away from like the stuff the prog rockers were singing about with all elves and wizards and bad poetry. And then <laughs> the clash definitely, but he got most of that, I think from reggae music. And I think that was the interesting thing about him living in my hometown was that it's a seaport town on the South coast of Wales. There's a big Caribbean population there. Also, also a lot of Somalian people. And uh, a and a South Asian people, but there were clubs. Um, he told me he went to a place called the Silver Sands Bar Bar Baden restaurant on Commercial Road down by the docks in Pilgwethley, or Pill as we called it. And he uh, he first heard people toast in there, which was when people the fresh twelve inches. Dub mixes and versions would come in off the banana boats. Ah, get, yeah. This place would get the records, and then they would uh, pick people would pick up the microphone and start singing over the top of them. And then that's the first time he heard that. And then, interestingly enough, there was a, there was a lot of that feel, um, improvisational kind of loose feel to those final shows he was doing with the Mescaleros before he died. But he, he died very suddenly and unexpectedly. But I really liked um, the direction he was going in, and the it, it was it was like he was bringing in all the influences from you know from his life, and he'd had a lot. He traveled a lot as a kid. His parents were in the diplomatic corps, I think, and he'd listen, to, you know, listen to local radio stations all over the world, and then in Newport, being really exposed to, you know, some interesting musical extremes. So. That's what uh, that's it's wonderful to to see that way uh, about global politics and music, how they mix and they become something new else. Uh, I wanted to ask you um, uh, about uh, there are two lyrics. I, I won't quote them all the all the I'm going to paraphrase them uh, about about them uh, done by the Mekons. One is called funeral that include the, follow, the following bits. Um, they are queuing up to dance on socialism grade. This funeral is for the wrong corpse. And then you present the question, how can something really be dead when it hasn't it hasn't even happened? And there is another... Well, we, we stole so, this. We stole that idea. You stole that idea? Well, I, I wanted to... to, 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 to um, Carlos Gallego, is it, the writer? Which... which, which... Book about, I think there's a writer called Gallego, G-L-L-E-G-O. I'm going to search for 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 for, I, for that writer. I, I I read a book at one time anyway that 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 talked about that. I think that's where the phrase "this funeral is for the wrong corpse" came from. 
That's that's a wonderful <laughs> that's a wonderful phrase. And there is what also is another song called Tina. I don't know if you say T N A A, but it's an acronym. I'm sorry. No this, these words are I mean never said them out loud. So acronym acronym for an acronym there is an, Margaret, Yeah, Margaret there is no alternative. There is no alternative. This is the only way things can be yeah. said. And it mentions something that to me is very inspiring. Uh, that's why I wanted to, to share that with our listeners, viewers. It mentions some I uh, that some ideas seems to be carved in stone and ends with this beautiful bit. Uh, but I can still dream of things that have never been, but someday will be. Those are very yeah. inspiring lyrics. And I would ask to ask you um, about this widely held notion that neoliberalism and capitalism is inevitable. And any search for an alternative will lead us to something like what they have in Venezuela. Yeah, that's what, that's how they paint it. You know, that's how they're painting it right here now. They're basically showing Kamala Harris as using AI to present her as standing in front of hammers and sickles. And, you know, I don't know. It's You'd think at this day and age, people will be more sophisticated and more able to understand. But it's a very, it's a very simple message that's completely false. Because, I mean, she may be a lot of things, but God almighty, she's not a socialist. <laughs> A communist, a Marxist, I don't know. Yeah, he's called, he's, he's, Trump has called her a Marxist. It's absolutely ludicrous, but, you Trump, know, it's just... The, uh, just the other day, he went to say, we're going to have like something like the purge, the parch. I, I don't know, I don't know how to say the, the name of the movie, something like one hour to, to go out and do violent crimes. It's like, the, the last time we spoke, uh, you told me that you were not very convinced uh, to vote for Biden because at that point, Biden was the candidate of the Democratic Party. You explained me very well about that. So, I, and at part, I say that I'm not Noam Chomsky. Well, I started to read this book. I recommend it. It's very good. Uh, some interviews uh, by Noam Chomsky about the Trump regime. And it's very scary because I wasn't paying that much attention. So... How do you see this scenario uh, from now on? Because they are like tied, uh, Kamala and... I think he could possibly win. I don't think she... She hasn't had enough time to distance herself from Biden. She hasn't chosen to distance herself from Biden. A lot of young people are, are appalled by what's going on in the Middle East and the American support for what the Israelis... what. You know, a right-wing lunatic like Netanyahu is being supported with our tax dollars. It's, it's going to it's going to be one year from this uh, October seven attacks, and when all this, it can't be called a war because it's something. Obsessed. Yeah, I mean that's what Biden made some crazy speech the other day when he said we will always, you know, that's America's role is always to support Israel and always to send the money. And he could have when it when that, you know. When that right-wing government was formed by Netanyahu, they could easily have shut that down. They could have used their, they could have used the dollars to say no. But you know, you got you got people really hurt in you financially. You know, they can't do the student loan relief because they're sending, which would cost very little, because they're sending billions daily to the fucking Middle East. It's uh, it's like Johnson. It's like Lyndon Johnson in Vietnam. It's just yes, yes, stupid. It's like a straight jacket they wear that they can't get out of. They have to do it. And the Democrats, the Democrats tell everyone it's you know if you don't if you don't vote for us, Trump will get in and it'll be the end of the world. And then, but I'm not sure it won't be. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure. I'm not sure they're very much better. What's so good about what the Democrats are doing? It's it's appalling what's happened in the last year. So yeah, it's it's worrying because you, you have Absolutely. people are choice. very. There's no need. Young people don't feel any need to support this. And uh, I would like to bring the conversation to a more pleasant topic <laughs> because this is this is very hard to wrap my head around uh, something bad and something very bad 
So you have also done paintings uh, of Joey Ramon and John Coltrane. Well, you have done so many beautiful paintings, but but these two, uh, I got some something like uh, okay. I'm going to ask him. Did you had did you had the chance to see the Ramones live uh, at some point? And also, how did you get into jazz music? Um. Yes, I did. I met Joey Ramone once, which was interesting. Interesting night out in New York in 1986, I think it was. He came to a show, 86 or 87. He went to a show of the Mikos? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. He walked into our dressing room at the end and uh, asked us if he could buy us a beer because he liked it. And we were like, okay. <laughs> Great. For a beer with Joey Ramon. Uh, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was kind of a, a magical evening. Um, but I always liked the Ramones. I thought the Ramones were, again, just so sort of very simple. The Ramones and the and Motorhead were these two bands I really, really liked because wow. it was like a, kind of primal music. You know, just they got an idea and they just run with it. You know, and it's. It's not fancy music, you know. And I'd had too, by that stage in my life, I'd had too much fancy prog rock music boring me to death. So, and he was, first, oh, sorry. First heard them. We played a festival with the Ramones once. That's when I saw them in Holland. And that was just amazing because they, they played during a, they played during a lightning storm. And it was, it was kind of great. The whole thing was really over the top. And he was, He was magnificent, and when we went out to, for a drink with him, he was just really friendly and really sweet guy. So, the Ramones were the first punk band that I ever listened to, so they, they have a special place in my heart. Uh, I, I also wanted to recommend this book uh, because um, it includes some interviews uh, with Joe, I mean, some interviews with many punk, um, how do you say, luminaires? Well, it's jo John Lanford is here, so, but it also has... <laughs> oh, really? You are you are talking about um, rock against racism. It's in a chapter right. about uh, punks versus Nazis. But it's very, well, for, for us, uh, in Chile, we don't have access to many of these books, and they are also not translated. So I had to buy the English version. It's, it's inter right. entertaining. It's a good update on punk, and it mentions the political side of Joy Ramon. I also wanted to know about, um, well, you have done many paintings about a musical style that is not uh, very well known in Chile, uh, country music. Uh, you have done paintings by the great uh, Hank Williams. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this this cassette that I found. I know that I know that record very well. Yeah, and, and it's it's wonderful. Uh, I recommend everyone to start with this one. Also, uh, this one was this artist was shown to me by an ex girlfriend, Tones by Sand. I played uh, Tones Tones on the radio show. Very good. And yes, blended. If but you have, <laughs> I I remember that you have a radio show in the past, maybe. And if you could recommend us a song, for example, by Bob Wills, I never uh, heard his music. So if there is a place to start for, I don't know. Uh, with Bob Wills, there's a, there's a series of records that came out called the Tiffany Transcriptions. And they were during a kind of period when they weren't making records. So radio stations were paying bands to come in and just record in the radio station. They were making, it was just, music for like a radio show like radio sessions and some of that stuff is absolutely incredible and there's a big volume of them and i've got got most of them on cd i don't know if you can still get them but um i'm yeah. going to search for them bob the tiffany transcriptions, it's called. Tiffany transcriptions. Find, yeah and, bob and wills is, bob wills was magic i'm going to to, to search for his arts and also yeah. uh, going back to the to the question about john coltrane any suggestion I, I played uh, some music of his on the radio show, but uh, any favorite of yours? Coltrane? Um, I can't think of any titles of anything. I've just got a couple of albums. Uh, I'm not sure 
I'd have to look. I'd have to look up what they are. I don't know what they're called. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, because But, um, they, no, there's I mean, some. I mean, I'm listening to a lot of stuff from that that period. There is a record I would recommend, which is uh, Duke Ellington, Max Roach, and Charlie Mingus. And it's called Money Jungle. I have, I have it. Great, great record. I'm going to include that, it. That's suggesting that's at the moment. Yes, it's very. That's a really Very interesting good. yeah yes yes um well we are near halloween <laughs> uh, at least i'm going to try to 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 pu publish this interview on the youtube channel of the show um before halloween and i was wondering uh, you have a brother uh, who is a writer of sci-fi his name is david langford i i read some stuff of yeah. his he's very funny Uh, he has won many Hugo Awards. <laughs> And I was wondering, uh, this is a very uh, fun-like question, but when you were small, when you were children, did you, did you saw uh, a show called Doctor Who on TV? Yes. <laughs> yes, I love that show. We saw the first episode together. You saw the My first? My brother was so excited and he made me watch the first episode. You saw the... Yes. That, that I was wow. very little when that you blew my mind. You blew my mind because well, yeah. uh, when I traveled to the UK, I loved uh, oh, watched it. I watched it for years with my kids as well, and we loved it. Oh, when I traveled to the UK, my I children. traveled to many stores like Forbidden Planet because those things never arrived here in South America. I, I got some some magazines for Doctor Who. This is very. I would love that more more people here in Chile will know that because it's all it's only Star Wars and Star Trek. And if you have any um, sci-fi, Doctor uh, Who's a lot more. Doctor Who's a lot stranger and more playful. It's more. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, and it's, it's more very intense. British. But yeah, but it's there was a lot of good writing on that show. Um, when David Tennant, Christopher Eccleston was the I forget which number Doctor is, but when they brought it back with him, they did one series. There was a guy called Russell T. Davis. Yes. was the writer. And he's a gay guy from Wales. And he's he he took it into some really interesting areas. Yes. And then David Tennant, David Tennant became the Doctor. And I thought that was just fantastic. It was just, it was so wild and so strange. The ideas in it were it, it, just it, really it, kind of, yeah. it's not, you know, it's, It's not space adventure. It's kind of satire and social commentary. It's more exactly, political. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. and even the first couple when Matt Smith was the doctor, that was pretty good as well. But I haven't been... I, I, they changed the cable setup. So they, they used to show them all the time, and now you have to pay a load of money to see them. So. Really? I, well, and my kids, my kids have left home, and so they're not interested. So <laughs> I recommend you... Um... I got this uh, Forbidden Planet. Um, that's the one with Capaldi, Peter Capaldi. He's a, oh, yeah. He's yeah, a great pretty... actor. And I, I think because I, I started with Eccleston. Sorry sorry about the pronunciation. It's going to kill, to kill me if he hears this. Um, then, um, then Tennant, then, then Matt Smith. But this one is my favorite because the, the stories are very... It's like uh, you... <laughs> That profound science fiction, what you were saying about social issues, and it's wonderful. Yeah. It's really, really wonderful. Yeah. Very clever and very, but they can be very funny as well, which I like. So to, 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 to end this conversation, uh, and thinking I'm glad about we the... talked about Doctor Who. Sorry? Sorry? I'm glad we talked about Doctor Who. It's been in and out of my life for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's definitely a great thing. I'm sorry, but every time I, I, I found someone from the UK or Wales, or I, I'm going to ask, do you know Doctor Who? Because it's like something very like a uh, special. Um, to oh, end this, the, the, the Doctor Who Museum in Cardiff. I took my kids there. Oh, I, I I would love to have been there. <laughs> we'll, it's we'll pretty great. Lot. I, I didn't have the chance. Oh my boy, this. Um, I'm going to, to end with a question, uh, thinking about Halloween and all we were talking about, like Doctor Who. Do you have any horror or sci-fi favorite movie that you would like to recommend our viewers? A horror or I like anything with Vincent Price in it. 
Ah, great, great, great. Yes. So uh, I forget the name of the one. I just I just saw one where he basically he was an old Shakespearean actor, and he all the people who've given him bad reviews, he kills them one by one. And ah, I know that I know that one, but I don't remember. Names. I don't remember the title, but it's fantastic. And Diana Rigg uh, plays his daughter in it. But most of the time, she's in drag with a mustache dressed as a guy. Which I'm, is going, <laughs> I'm going to search for that one because I love yeah. those Hammer and uh, Amicus, all, all very old yeah. movies. The I don't really like slasher horror. You know, I like I like horror movies that are amusing. So there was one called Quad the Quatermass Experiment that I saw and I said, yeah. "Oh, this is very Doctor Who like." And yeah. Quat Quatermass and the Pit. That's something yeah. that's really, that's good really good one. So, yeah. thank you so much for this second conversation. Uh, no, the audio... like I said, I, I, I was, you know, my brother doesn't listen to music, and I really didn't read much science fiction. But it's funny how I've got into it over the years. And when we slept in the same bedroom a lot, when my grandmother came to stay, and it was, it was like sleeping in a library. He had so many books. He always bought books he has thousands of books so and he still does it's great yeah 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 i remember he... check him out sorry sorry the david langford check him out everyone yeah yeah i'm i'm going to recommend because i have an anthology where it's a a very good story of his of he um, he wrote many times uh, many years ago sorry <laughs> my english is getting worse by the minute so we are going to leave it here you're, you're and... doing good Thank you so much uh, and have a great, uh, uh, you are in autumn, you are in spring at this moment. It is autumn, it is getting, the leaves are about to fall from the trees. Thank you very much, John. Uh, have, a, have a nice day. Bye. We talk soon. All right, pal. Bye. 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 Hello, Chile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>